Extatosoma teoretum are exopterygota insects. This means they undergo incomplete metamorphosis. Their wings gradually grow in size on the outside of the body until they are fully developed, and nymphs resemble adults in appearance and behaviour and even share the same environment and food source. The molting process can be divided into two major steps. The first step is called apolysis, which is the separation of the old cuticle from the underlying epidermal cells. This is caused by replication of the epidermal cells. These cells are stimulated by hormones which are synthesized and released from endocrine glands called prothoracic glands. Extatosoma tiarata may not eat during this first step for a couple of days. This is because the old cuticle in the fore and hind gut begins separating which makes it difficult to digest. Before beginning to emerge, the stick insect will position itself into a stable and safe position. Sometimes they aren't particularly good at this step and may begin molting too close to the ground. If this ever occurs, gently remove the molting stick insect and either hold it by the feet until it finishes molting or gently place it in a higher position. Once the stick insect has settled, the underside of the prothorax and mesothorax may appear sunken in as the insect begins to push against the dorsal side of these structures. Small contractions would be seen in the abdominal region. At this point, it is vital not to disturb the insect to eliminate any possible injuries. If you are needing to do a leaf change or need to move the insect for any other reason, but you aren't certain if they're beginning to molt, take a look at this following video. This video compares the contractions of a stick insect beginning to molt with a stick insect that is simply breathing. Molting contractions are more consistent and generally move the whole body, whereas breathing contractions are less rhythmic and are only seen in the abdomen. The process of pushing the new skin out of the old is called ecdysis. This begins when a small slit appears on the old exoskeleton, which is called the exuvium, near the joint of the prothorax and mesothorax. The head and the antenna are then pushed out from this small slit. You may witness the top of the head deflating and inflating with each contraction. This is because the freshly exposed parts of the insect are still very soft and have not yet hardened. The thorax and legs are then pushed out as the contractions continue. Once nearly all of the abdomen has come free of the exuvium, the insect will slowly fall upside down where it will remain for a few minutes to allow the fresh exoskeleton to harden. The only parts of the body that will remain in the exuvium at this point are the tarsals and metatarsals of the back feet and abdomen segments 7, 8 and 9. Twitches of the mouth and limbs may be observed as liquids move around the body to harden and inflate the new exoskeleton. Once the insect has hardened efficiently, it will lift itself back up and pull out the remaining bit of abdomen that's still encased in the exuvium. This is the end of ecdysis. The stick insect will remain in this same position for a few more minutes to finish hardening. The freshly molted body may appear somewhat darker than usual, but will eventually lighten up as it hardens. Even though the phasmid has finished molting, it is suggested to refrain from handling them for at least 24 hours from this point onwards. This is to ensure they have completely hardened their new exoskeleton. The insect may then eat the discarded exuvium to recycle vital nutrients that would otherwise go to waste. Consuming the old skin also decreases the risk of attracting predators which could harm the newly shedded stick insect. The exuvium may appear a yellowish to white colour and may faintly smell of toffee. This is caused by the natural defence pheromone produced by the endocrine gland which is used to deter predators.